I mentioned, when I think about our communities, I think about what are the things that don't allow them to be successful. Why do we see our gateways dying after a year or two years or, or, or not being in a, in a position financially to carry on? Are there ways we can leverage each community and in each community to build that stronger sustainability plan? Do we need to have a broader audience? Do we need to have, um, do we need to combine gateways into a bigger, to become a bigger gateway to be a better community? Those are all ideas that we're kicking around here and how do we help you grow and be more sustainable? And then the third bullet, assisting in managing risks within the community. Again, if we're looking at, um, I will pick on um, logging in as a issue that we seem to come up against all the time. How are we managing those risks so we can lower the barrier to entry so our gateways can be su sustainable and successful? So what we want to do is pick apart some of those risks that our gateways are experiencing, put them into the communities and say, can we, can we even assist each other in minimizing those risks to be successful? And then finally, recognizing outreach opportunities by our communities. In the past, our um, gateway coordinators, AKA Claire, Eric, and Megan, have attended some of our community's um, presentations and conferences. What we want to do is start to embed ourselves in these outreach into these communities and seeing um, what your groups, your individual gateways are doing and, and in your conferences, and are there places where we can learn and leverage that information to come back and build better, op, better solutions internally to help fulfill some of those gaps? So what we want to do is start figuring out what individual gateways are doing and, and aligning that with um, what conferences you're going to, what are the risks you're taking, and, um, and how do we leverage that to build better products and better services to help you become more successful. Um, so in the next few weeks, uh, and I will talk a little bit about the deliverables later on, but in the next few weeks, you'll probably see a, another survey, yet another survey come out from me, asking for more information from you. Um, if, if you feel it's important enough, and, and by the way, we will try to hit any open source community people we know about. So if you don't currently engage with me from a foundation standpoint or um, or I haven't seen a ticket from you, if you'd like to get involved with this survey and get engaged with us, please drop me an email and we'll have our email addresses at the end or Claire will follow it up with anyone on the call. If, if you don't have my email, feel free to email me because I, I really want to hear your feedback about what it is you think your mission is. How do you, where do you see you want your hub to go over the next year, two years, three years, five years? And what are the things we do well? And what are the things we don't do well? Because there's no way we can improve if we're not hearing that kind of feedback. And I, I, I really want to have impact in this area over the next six to nine months. So moving on to timely releases. Um, so part of our mission in order to make you sustainable is to talk about how do we vet your request and how do we know how to es escalate re request in a timely manner. So if you're looking at the request process itself, AKA today known as a, a, a support ticket, um, the ticket comes in and, and sometimes we, um, we can understand very quickly, is this a feature, is this a problem, is this critical, is it not critical? But what we really need to hone in on is internally, we're going to do a much better job and as a customer, you may be a little frustrated with us up front, but we wanna start asking better questions and the reason I, I want to see this happen is because if we can get a better quality request, ticket, feature request, whatever you might want to call it, earlier, then our team can be do a much better job of getting that ticket downstream fixed faster and quicker. And that the end result internally is to deliver quality service faster and better. So when so be patient with us as. Um, so be patient with us as we, um, as we start this process. Some of you may have already noticed on some tickets we'll, we, we ask some three primary questions. And, and that's so we can understand quickly how to recreate the problem. Sometimes we, uh, we don't have a crystal ball every time to figure out what are they doing. So please, again, be patient with us as we work through that process. 
And, and so you say, okay, you're gonna, we're working these tickets and, and I have this critical ticket, how is it going to get, um, how am I gonna get my fix quickly when I need it? So that second bullet talks about our escalation process that we're doing internally. And I wanna tell you a little bit about a story that we had just recently with an escalation process that I thought went very well. And we talked about it as a team, and I, and I feel like if we can continue to have these kind of wins, then you as our customer will know that internally we do have an escalation problem and a process and we are um, working it very um, vigilantly every day. So recently we had a ticket and uh, the problem was putting the customer out of business and internally uh, we didn't quite understand all the ins and outs and we went back and forth, back and forth and it got escalated to a critical and uh, internally we didn't know that it met the critical criteria that we have. And so we, we decreased it down to major. But in the, time, in the same time, uh, Claire, I will just give Claire some credit here, went ahead and, and slacked our internal development team and said, hey, I think this is probably pretty critical. Let's get it escalated and see what we can do. So out of band, what we call out of band fixes, we went ahead and got the fix directly on the hub and then applied the fix across all the hubs. So I think we are developing that process in a more written fashion and in the weeks to come, you'll probably see how that process will evolve. I would, and again, as our customer, if you're seeing tickets that you really need response on, you always have the, the right to uh, ping me and ask, hey, is there something is going on here? Because again, we're looking for feedback every step of the way during this process. And with that, we'll also be moving to monthly code updates. And this will be happening the first Monday of each month. And what we're really trying to do there is, as we see issues coming in, we will be categorizing them into, does it have to be, again, does it have to meet our escalation process and we get that directly on the hub immediately? Or can we gather tickets that seem like they're the same component and utilize our time in a more efficient way to apply, say for instance, uh, we have two or three issues come in on resources and, and today the process is, we find a problem on, in resources, we fix that problem, we roll the code out. What we'd like to move to is we find a problem in resources on two or three hubs and they're slightly different. Can we gather those fixes, make one solid fix and run through our um, testing process that Sean will talk about in a little bit and bundle those up and send them out and be more efficient in our coding, more efficient in our um, documentation if it needs to be, and, and finally in that testing process. So we're again gonna try to give this a, a run and we'll see how it works. And as we tend to roll, if, as we're rolling this out, if our customers seem to find a problem, I'm always looking for feedback on that as well. But we'll see how that goes. Um, we will be shooting to do that starting in October. Um, so the first week of October you should see um, for internal customers, you won't see a different. You'll just see our your hub will be updated on that Wednesday. For our um, open source folks, uh, I, Sean, I think you said that they should be able to get that from GitHub. Yes, um, we were trying to ensure that the latest code is always available on GitHub. Um, if you want to pull the um, at least the web-based code directly from GitHub. Um, secondary from that, I would like and then we'll see how the, well this goes, but we would like to have packages at least quarterly, I believe. And then um, I, we were talking about doing major releases twice a year. So, um, so, so Sean will uh, talk a little bit yeah. about the major releases. I'm yeah. trying to advance the slides. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, um, Wait, you jumped it. Uh, the major releases and formal design. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was on to secure code and I had to back <laughs> up there for a second. I'm screwing up the whole presentation here. Um, so, uh, formal design process. Um, a number of you have kind of already encountered this as uh, over the past year as we've been going to more and more of a uh, having write-ups for uh, use cases and uh, project designs and so on. 
And while this is a little bit more work up front, we feel that the end result is a lot better because it allows you to actually hold us to, hey, here's everything we agreed on. Um, so we have to ensure that everything um, that we signed up front, instead of just trying to vaguely remember, oh, did we talk about that or did we say we would do that or not? And then it also, in a way, helps us um, kind of guard against potentially feature creep and uh, making sure we don't go off the rails um, deciding to just completely do something totally different or whatever. So the, um, you, more and more you'll see more of these documents um, being handed around and we usually ask you to even fill out simple use cases for probably even some of the simplest of feature changes just to make sure that we all get it right and we're on the same page. Um, so far we've found this to actually work out really well and um, yeah, uh, it, like I said, it has, gives you a chance to hold us to something as well. So. Yeah, and I think we found it actually cuts down on the development timeline itself because once we get the idea internally and know exactly what our customers want, um, we can execute pretty quickly. So I think that this, we are finding that the, de the timeline actually has decreased. Yeah, a little bit more work up front with the fact finding and all of that, I think, uh, makes for a, a heck of a lot smoother process in the end. So the next part uh, is secure code. Uh, and some of the things we've been trying to pursue here, um, traditionally uh, we do uh, security scans of the code, IBM App Scan being uh, the primary tool we use there. Uh, we would normally do these scans uh, for major releases and then uh, we would try to get in and do them uh, periodically, maybe quarterly or so on. Um, I've been really pushing towards, uh, I would like to have these uh, weekly, if we can, um, bi-weekly at the absolute minimum. Um, so we want to be doing essentially constant scans. Um, every time um, we're updating code, it's getting sent through a security scanner. Uh, and we have security personnel engaging in the day-to-day -day programming. Um, this is, of course, Pascal, who many of you know. Um, he lives and breathes security, um, <laughs> so he is, I mean, he's told security experts, you know, how to do things before, so I would say he's kind of the guru here. Um, so, and he's going to be in it probably more involved on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, uh, kind of helping out with these things like security scans and advice and so on, and that leads directly into um, our engagement with the CTSC. Now, the CTSC uh, is a NSF-funded organization whose goal, I believe, is to uh, essentially audit or sort of audit or and provide advice and guidance to uh, NSF-funded projects on how they can improve their security, how they should be doing security, and so on. This was a project that I believe started with NanoHub um, a little over a year ago, maybe a little bit sooner. Um, they went through, we went through kind of the process with them on NanoHub and then more recently we've kind of engaged with them with Hub Zero as a whole and um, we now I believe have, uh, I think PASCO has weekly meetings and we're going to be probably jumping in on monthly meetings with myself and potentially a few other people. Um, so uh, we're, they're helping us straighten out our processes, we're giving them kind of advice on how some of the things we see. Um, so we're starting to work actually very closely with this group. Um, so uh, that's turning out to be another kind of big win. Um, and then the next part, which actually goes hand in hand with the security uh, part, is well-tested code. And what we're doing here is an initiative that started uh, about a year ago. Um, we had. Uh, I'll kind of back up a little bit here. Um, for some of the nitty gritty details of kind of Hub Zero, at least for the CMS, is actually two parts. There's a, the core framework and then there's the CMS that sits on and uses the framework. Um, as an experiment in the framework, we started setting it up in such as on GitHub, where uh, we make code changes, we have to do a request to have that change merged into the core branch, and no single person is allowed to um, approve their own change. That means every single code change goes through a minimum two pairs of eyes. And so someone else is looking at that code, ensuring that it looks correct, that there's no glaring security holes, no major uh, code problems like you accidentally, you know, 
put in a die statement or something somewhere in the code. Um, and so we started this over a year ago as kind of an experiment, and it's been going extremely well. And as we're ramping that up now, we want to try to move to uh, doing that with everything, with the CMS as a whole. Um, so we're working towards that direction. Along with that, we also have been adding uh, just flat out unit test, um, which is kind of the simplest test probably to put in there. And that's been fantastic because it helped us actually find some bugs that we didn't even know about. Um, as we were writing the test, we found, oh, hey, this doesn't actually do what I was expecting it to do. Um, so that's actually been a success story already. And it's helped us find bugs um, in the code before it ever even reaches customers. Uh, along with that, we have integration test and regression test. And um, we have, uh, for instance, um, um, We'll see selen selenium, selenium um, yeah. uh, up and running. We're going to putting together tests like that, and these are the kind of tests that help with uh, sort of testing the user interface. Something that is really hard to do is something like a unit test, where it's either kind of just it is or it isn't. Uh, interfaces can be kind of muddy and so on. So we're putting together suites of tests that run through the page, kind of click every button and see if the action does what it's supposed to do, and so on. And Along with this um, is also we've been doing code reviews. We have uh, started doing uh, weekly code reviews where we just kind of go down the list and look at our, every commit that all the developers have done and kind of quickly look at it and see if anything looks out of band or it's something we want to go back and revisit and so on. And I will pause here and say I have to give um, huge credit or probably all of it um, to the developers. This is not a dictation coming down from <laughs> the top. Um, this was coming from the bottom up. This was something the developers felt extremely passionate about and were pushing on us to do. Like, we need to be doing code reviews, we need to be writing tests, and so on. Um, so, um, when you have even, you know, you know, the developers are the ones who are clamoring to do this, I, I think that's huge. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of credit goes to them for this. Um, so finally wrapping up with the deliverables, I want to take one step back. So Sean talked a lot about our regression and integration and regre uh, testing. Part of that integration testing, the, uh, my view is if I can get our gateway experts, our gateway coordinators, Claire, Megan, and Eric out in the field and understanding our customers' needs, then I, I feel like internally we can write better scripts to see what they can do during that testing period. So can we build up some of the scenarios from an NCIP hub and reproduce that on during our testing process? We also have underway where we have, we're gonna be duplicating you know, production hubs in some cases where we can and running through those integration tests with that cleansed hub offline. So our idea is that we do better jobs of understanding our customers' needs. So before it even reached reaches the customer, we have a pretty sure, we're pretty sure that the quality of code has gone up dramatically. Um, to, and finally, with the deliverables, I want to talk about a few things we want to do in the next, you know, a few, few weeks to, like I said, over the next year. Our gateway service level agreement has always existed. Um, in some cases, you have re received written documentation, and this really goes toward our internal hubs we support. But I can imagine that part of our service level agreement should be sent to any gateway that we're working with. It would explain our priorities in terms of how we escalate um, tickets. It would talk about our response time. So uh, we are updating that internally and we will probably talk with our internal hubs first just so we haven't missed the mark on anything. But then that would be generally available for any of our gateways. Additionally, all webinars, we will continue to do webinars, but we will specifically do webinars with gateway communities, individual gateway communities. Again, once I understand how our gateways fall into a community, we will start doing webinars specifically community by community. And I want to throw in here, uh, Mike, our director, just stopped and said to me, hey, um, can we put a plug in for Hubbub for next year? And what I can imagine there, and we, we're thinking March or spring for this, for Hubbub, and what I would like to see is can we get our communities 
doing presentations about their specific gateways. So could we have the healthcare industry or or you name the, the community, can we build out some presentations and they talk about their mission and how they're using Hub Zero to fulfill their gateway and be sustainable. So I wanna kind of put a plug in there. And, and one thing that's not mentioned here is again that survey. So I might be doing that survey through email, I may call you personally, but I really want to understand what it is you want to get out of Hub Zero and, and the platform itself and what are you looking to do in your community? Because if we can't solve that problem, it doesn't really matter what we put on your front page. So I think it's very important that we have that one-to-one -one communication with you and kind of reset. And, and, and hopefully you dream big. You know, let, let's be that Amazon. Let's be that Moz, Mozilla. Let's, let's think about how we engage in that. And then finally, we have a couple other things that will be falling out of this. You'll see templates for our design process coming out to you. We're, again, more than happy to share this with our open source community that's not a current hub we support, support internally. And we'll be doing use cases as well, which is not mentioned here, but we do have a form for that. And then continuous in communication. Communicate, communicate, communicate. If we cannot continue to communicate, we won't be successful. And I firmly believe that we all want to make a difference, and that starts with webinars like the, these. Um, so I think that's pretty much what we wanted to summarize today. What you will see over the next um, 12 months is that we will be honing in on every one of these um, things we mentioned today in much more detail. This presentation was really only meant to be very high level with the understanding that as we pick apart these processes, they, there will be much more detail in in, in how we present them to you and how we how we roll them out. I think yep. that's okay. everything. Thank you again, Betsy and Sean, for Thank your you. time. Thanks everyone for attending.